Hey, Carew. It is 7 o'clock in the morning on Monday the 11th of October. And Sarah and I are going on our morning walk. We're out on Hollyhead or Unis Cubby. Unis Cubby. Unis Cubby. And I want to talk to you about the trip and how it's going. And I know you can't see me because it's pretty dark right now. And also it's incredibly jittery and shaky. So I'm hoping it'll make you sick to your stomach. Uh, but the trip itself has been really interesting. It's been super intense, as one might expect. Um, and basically our days have started out with us getting up anywhere from, whoops, I left Sarah in the back, anywhere from 4.30 to 6.30, um, and getting out of the house, usually by, I think, guess the latest we've been out of the house was 6.45. Um, Sarah and I go and do a walk and go to see something that we want to see, um, and it usually takes, we're home by 9.30 at the latest, often a little earlier, and then we eat breakfast. I work on editing videos. Actually, usually I get up before Sarah um, and work for an hour or two hours on editing videos and, and photos. And then we go for a walk and then we get back and I work while Sarah makes breakfast for everybody. And then we're on the road, usually by 10. It's been as late as 11 o'clock. And we, we go. Had to take a COVID test. What's that? We had to take the COVID test. That's right. After 11. We had to take our COVID tests, so that got us going late. But um, so then we go see a few things with mom and dad and Isaac and Jess and Taryn. And honestly, I'm not sure how much they know where we are or what we're doing half the time because um, we're just dragging them along and uh, but they're all pretty pliable um, Isaac I think is having a good time and actually Taryn really likes having Isaac and Jess here which is fun so then we uh, we usually get home what between four and five yeah. um, we, we eat lunch uh, at a pub or we buy food at a bakery yesterday we couldn't find either so we just went to a grocery store and bought food and ate it and um, and then we uh, we get home and Sarah and I sometimes actually run errands so we'll go shopping um, and if we're not going shopping we're uh, Oh, this is kind of cool. Then we we work, and then Sarah cooks dinner for everybody. And we eat dinner, and we work until it is, uh, we're exhausted, which is usually between 8 and 9.30. On the first weekend, I stayed up till, oh, smucky down here, Sarah, watch out. I stayed up till 11 to get Sarah's video done for for the first Monday. Um, and then I was wiped out. Actually, the next day, I was... Uh, grumpy. Yeah, Sarah says I was grumpy. So, um, yeah, uh, that's what we've been doing. But one of the cool things about this is that... Um, Sarah has been speaking a ton of Welsh. Uh, so when we got here, it's funny because like the first Saturday we went to a pub and uh, Sarah asked the uh, server if she spoke Welsh and she, the server said yes. And then Sarah said, can I practice Welsh with you? And the server basically said something to Sarah she didn't understand. And Sarah was like, looked at her blankly. And then 
she basically refused to speak Welsh to Sarah again the entire rest of our time there. And uh, Sarah was like, okay, I understand you don't want to speak to me. But it was kind of a bummer because she was like, oh no. And then a couple more times, Sarah tried to speak to people and they weren't interested. Um, and it was really Andy, wasn't it? Yeah. So, but then like the third day or we were here, she had scheduled with a guy whom she met through her Welsh lessons online to get together and speak Welsh with him at a little cafe. So we went there and she went over and this cafe is run by the the Welsh, uh, by Cymru, isn't it, Sarah? It's like yeah, a... Cadu. Um, so it's a... It's a yeah, so it's a cultural council and they do cultural stuff. It's part of a little museum. And uh, so the server there, I, I went up to get food. So we went and sat off somewhere else and she went over and talked to this guy, the 70 year old guy named Andy, speaking uh, Welsh with him. And I went to get food and the server asked why we were here. And I said, well, we're here, my wife's here to practice her Welsh with that guy. And he goes, oh, yeah, I heard her speaking Welsh over there. She's really good. And uh, and so she ended up having an hour-long conversation with Andy in Welsh, and it got her confidence up. And then she uh, just started, you know, she would meet people and just ask them if they speak Welsh. And channel my inner Karoo. Channel her inner Karoo, she says. And she... Uh, started basically every day now she has two or three pretty extensive conversations yeah. with people in welsh and actually she uh we were when we went to carnarvon castle she started speaking welsh with the the person who was who was there taking our tickets or whatever and the woman was so excited that sarah could speak welsh they ended up having like a 10 minute conversation and the woman was like, I can't believe how well you can speak this. She And she was uh, all excited. And so, you know, it's one of those things where that confidence, I think, builds. And it's to the point where yesterday we were in this little town of Nevin. And we went to a museum there and Sarah spoke Welsh extensively with the woman there. And then we were out on the street looking at this site. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it was, but... And this local walked by, this woman, and and she said, are you guys lost? <laughs> and and we were like, no, we're looking at this thing that Edward did. And she went off on Edward, how horrible Edward is, you know. And so Sarah just started speaking in her, in Welsh with her. And the woman was like, all of a sudden, like super nice and and super excited. And so Sarah had this, you know, pretty extensive conversation with this woman on the street. And I think, Sarah, is it fair to say that you have, I mean, there's a, there's a area in which you are comfortable conversing. Yes. And so you kind of, you've reached a point where you're in this zone. And as long as you're having conversation in this area, it's, it works really well. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on where the, you know, the vocabulary wants to start discussing, like, you know, anything academic or I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to fail in my vocabulary. But I learned decided uh, yesterday I'm very money. So I can yeah. say I decided that's super, super fun. I learned to say actually. Well, and we also, we had a meetup with uh, one of, with a, a few of her readers, like four of them. Yeah. And, um, and one of them is a native Welsh speaker named Margaret, who's in her seventies. And we'd met her once before and she sat down and immediately started speaking Welsh with Sarah and was super excited and posted on Facebook saying that Sarah was nearly fluent, which is obviously a, a very kind, like a kind, thing to say. kind <laughs> overstatement. But at the same time, it's all that, it, it's that confidence, you know, it's that idea that you can now go speak to people and you don't have that experience, you know, that, that first experience in the pub could have been 
kind of devastating where this young woman is like up. Oh. Well, and then there's a ton of times where everyone's like, I say, and they say, which means a little bit, which kind of means like not at all. Like they're learning or one guy was like, dusky, dusky, I'm learning. And then I said something to him in Welsh and he was like, no, nope, no, nope, you're already way beyond me. So, um, and that happens all the time. Young people, old people, um, I was surprised at the number of young people who don't speak it because they should have learned it in school. Yeah. Um, but then they only started teaching Welsh in school in 1999. So. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's kind of what our trip has been. I know this is long. Maybe I'll throw in a bunch of clips of, <laughs> of stuff we're doing, more entertaining than, than our walk here for you to look at. But uh, that's our story. I'm sticking to it. Actually, we I think we're just about at the place we're walking to. We're walking to this little island that there's a bridge to that has an archaeological site on it. it. Had a hill fort on it, I think. So here I'll turn around so you can kind of see. It's out there someplace. Oh yeah. Sunrise. The sun's coming up. So we'll get some pictures of the sunrise hopefully. Alright, like I said, that's my story. Sticking to it. Hope you're having a good time. Take care. Bye-bye.